Reading has always been one of my favorite pastimes, but around fourth or fifth grade, I really started to struggle to finish those books as they were getting bigger. The Spiderwick Chronicles by Tony Dieterlitzi and Holly Black really helped me to overcome that. It wasn't something I'd really thought about until Tony Dieterlitzi brought it up in an Instagram Live recently. Christina Olivia Art says, your illustrations for Spiderwick got me interested in reading after being behind in school. Now I love reading. That's so cool to hear, uh, Christina. Thank you. Um, you know, when Holly and I worked on those Spiderwick books, we didn't know what uh, a reluctant reader was, which is probably what you would have been, the teachers would have classified you. And I know this because I was a reluctant reader um, also and was reading below my grade level when I was in school. Um, we didn't construct the Spiderwick books. It was more a by byproduct that at the time the Harry Potter books were getting longer and longer, and we wanted um, to create, uh, tell the same kind of of deep story, but make it more um, manageable for younger readers to enjoy. That's really all it kind of came down to. We just wanted younger readers to be able to kind of finish a story that was fairly complex, and so we just broke the book up into smaller, you know, the story up into smaller books. I wouldn't call myself a reluctant reader, but those books really helped me to have the courage to finish books and to continue on to read larger ones. I've been reading through his Wandla series recently, and it's really given me an insight into what specifically makes up his distinct writing style. One of my favorite things in his stories is his addition of drawings. In both the Spiderwick Chronicles and the Wandla series, he fills his stories with beautiful drawings of the characters and scenes throughout. I understand that some people might not like this because they like to be able to build the world themselves, but I like it because I get to see exactly what he intended the world and characters to look like. Now, I'm not a very good artist, so I don't think that I'd ever be able to pull something off like that myself. But pairing up with an artist like Holly Black did with Tony Dieterlitzi would be much more realistic for someone like me. Here's a segment from the first chapter of The Field Guide, the first book in the Spiderwick Chronicles. Chapter 1 in which the Grace children get acquainted with their new home. If someone had asked Jared Grace what jobs his brother and sister would have when they grew up, he would have had no trouble replying. He would have said that his brother Simon would be either a veterinarian or a lion tamer. He would have said that his sister Mallory would be either an Olympic fencer or in jail for stabbing someone with a sword but he couldn't say what job he would grow up to have. Not that anyone asked him. Not that anyone asked his opinion on anything at all. The new house, for instance. Jared Grace looked up at it and squinted. Maybe it would look better blurry. It's a shack, Mallory said, getting out of the station wagon. It wasn't really, though. It was more like a dozen shacks had been piled on top of one another. There were several chimneys, and the whole thing was topped off by a strip of iron fence sitting on the roof like a particularly garish hat. I love the way the series starts. Right away, we have a clear picture of who the Grace children are and what they are like. The addition of drawings helps the reader, who is supposed to be much younger than me, know exactly what the house Jared and Simon look like. My favorite line is, the whole thing was topped off by a strip of iron fence sitting on the roof like a particularly garish hat. That is a line that has stuck with me since I first read it. But I'm not sure how much of the Spiderwick Chronicles was written by Tony Dieterlitzi and how much was written by Holly Black. So let's look at one he wrote himself. Here is an excerpt from chapter one in The Search for Wandla, read by Tony Dieterlitzi. Eve and nine, urged the voice, get up. The girl rolled onto her side. Lying on the forest floor, she examined the tuft of moss in her hand. She saw that the delicate network of stalks really did make it look like a shrunken tree, albeit a washed-out, lifeless one. How does such an insignificant plant survive in a big world, she wondered. What is its purpose? What is my purpose? Eva, please. I'm dead. Eva announced the sky. Or couldn't you tell? I'm gone, deceased, no more, dead. She turned her attention back to the little moss tree and pouted. 
It's not like you have to worry about that, she muttered. The clump of moss in her hands vanished, dissipating into a cloud of light motes. Eva curled up into a ball, shutting her eyes as the world around her also evaporated into nothingness, emptiness. The voice was right next to her now. Eva, what happened? Leave me alone, the ball replied. You were not paying attention, the voice said with a sigh. You had a 98% chance of discovering the snake. Had you done a simple life scan sweep, it was right there in plain view. Still curled in a ball, Eva said nothing. Of course, I have to mark you as a failure on this particular survival skill test. You shall try it again tomorrow. All right, said the voice. A warm hand brushed Eva's half-braided, dirty blonde hair. At last, Eva stood up. Two dark orbs emitting an amber glow from deep within reflected Eva's own face in a distorted fashion, like a fish in a fishbowl. Large, automated eyelids clicked open and close in a lifelike manner. Several other eyes, small and unblinking, studied the girl, recording endless data and sending it to a computerized brain, a brain that was contained in two metallic canisters mounted on the back of the head, the front of which displayed a mechanized silicone rubber face. Like the Spiderwick Chronicles, in this short section, we get an insight into who Eva Nine is and her relationship with her robot mother. Tony DiTerlizzi starts his story off with a quote from Albert Einstein. If you want your children to be intelligent, read them fairy tales. If you want them to be more intelligent, read them more fairy tales. Tony DiTerlizzi has dedicated his career by creating stories that build up children's imagination by telling stories about fairies, dragons, robots, and aliens. A quote from him says, Imagination empowers us to envision and create a reality of what could be. We must hold it dear, foster it, and never abandon it. This is something that I hope to do in the stories that I want to tell someday. <laughs> 